Hi everyone, you're watching the Get Started with Jenkins series. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Jenkins to deploy a website to an FTP server. So let's get going. So before we begin, we need to install a little piece of software onto our Jenkins server. And this software is called Git FTP. It's a simple tool that can update your FTP server based on the changes in your Git repository. So I'm gonna log into my Jenkins server, which is hosted on a Scaleway VPS. And since this server is running Ubuntu, the way I install packages is through the apt package manager. So I'm gonna run apt get install git dash FTP. And this will install Git FTP along with any of the dependencies that it might have. Once that is finished, we can check that it was installed correctly by running git FTP. And this will return something like this, saying that we have to run git FTP with an action, some options and a URL. So that's all we have to do in our terminal. So let's head over to our Jenkins installation and take it from there. So the first thing that we're gonna do in Jenkins is we're going to save our FTP username and our password as a credential in Jenkins. In this video, I will also use the credentials binding plugin to securely store and use these credentials. Check out the previous video in case you haven't set this plugin up yet. So let's go to the credentials and let's create a new user for our FTP server and let's store it in the Jenkins scope under the global credentials. Let's add a credential here. It's of course with the username and password and it has a global scope. Now for the username and password, I'm gonna to go to this little text file here. I'm gonna copy over the username that I created on my FTP server. I'm also gonna copy the website and I'm gonna give it an ID. I'm gonna call this uh, FTP my website, for example, and maybe also give it a description, FTP account that can access my website, for example. And I'm gonna click okay to save these credentials in Jenkins, and there we go. So now that that is out of the way, let me show you what website I actually want to deploy to this FTP server. So here on GitHub, I've created a repository for my website. It has two files, an index.html file and a simple style sheet. And this is what the website looks like. It's just a very simple hello world that says, I am a web page that was deployed with Jenkins and Git FTP. It's really simple, but it gets the point across. So let's go back to our Jenkins installation and let's create the job for this website. I'm gonna click create new job and I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna say my website. This is a freestyle project. Let's continue. Now let's scroll down to source code management. I want Jenkins to pull the Git repository from GitHub. So I'm gonna say Git. I'm gonna go back to GitHub here. I'm gonna click clone. I'm gonna copy the URL that GitHub gives me. And I'm gonna paste that into the repository URL here. We don't need any credentials for this repository because it's a public repository, but you might need some credentials when it's a private repository. I'll make a video on this uh, topic later on. Next, we're gonna scroll down to build environment and I'm gonna say that I want to use secret texts or files because remember, we just saved our username and our password as a credential in Jenkins, but now I also want to use them. When I click it, a new section pops up called bindings. So I'm gonna say add a username and password separated. Again, you can watch the previous video if you want more information about how to use these bindings and how to use environment variables in Jenkins. I'm gonna say that my username should be stored in FTP underscore username and my password should be stored in FTP underscore password. And these variables will be filled in with the credentials that you define here. So this is my FTP username and password, so I'm gonna leave that set. The final thing that we need to do is we need to add a build step. So I'm gonna click add build step and I'm gonna go for execute shell because there is no plugin available for git FTP and Jenkins. Now the command that we want to execute is the following. It's git FTP push and we're gonna give it a username, in this case, FTP underscore username. We're gonna give it our password. And finally, 
we're gonna tell it where to upload to. I'm gonna go to my document here again to copy the IP address of the server. Boom, and we want it to upload our website in the folder public underscore HTML. Now a small note about Git FTP. Git FTP uploads only the files that have been changed since the last commit. And to know what the last commit was, Git FTP creates a small file on your server that tells it what the latest commit was that got deployed to the server. So the first time that you deploy to your server, you cannot use push, but you have to use init. This will tell Git FTP to upload all the files in your repository and make the small file on your server so that in the future it will know what files have been changed. So that's it for our job. Let's go ahead and save it and let's click build now. Okay, so this took just a few seconds and you can see our first build is finished and it's showing a blue orb which signifies that, it's, uh, that it has been successful. So let's go to console output and let's see what it has actually done. So the first thing that it does is it clones our remote Git repository. It fetches the code of our website. And if I scroll down, here you can see Git FTP init username with our blanked out username and our blanked out password. And here it says that it buffered the file for upload index.html and it also buffered my style.css for upload. So that's it, our website got now deployed. But now there's one more thing left. Let's go back to our project and let's go into the configuration again. And let's scroll down to our build steps and let's now change the init to push so that next time our job runs, Git FTP will only upload the files that have been changed. So let's save that. And there we go. That's all you need to do to upload files to an FTP server. So that's it for this video. Want to learn more about Jenkins? Check out the rest of the Get Started Jenkins series. In this video series, I'll discuss topics like how you can run Jenkins after each commit or how to run unit tests. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel or follow me on Twitter.